Hello and welcome to day 14 of Breakup Recovery Series for the month of August. My name is Irina Shehovtsov. If you're joining me live today for the first time, I am certified NLP timeline therapy and hypnotherapy coach. And for the month of August, we are talking about breakup recovery tools, ticks, trips, and <laughs> techniques that you can implement today to feel better, to feel more energetic, to recover and to truly live your life. So yesterday we were talking about change your story, change your life. It's all in your mindset, the things you tell yourself. And that's how your life uh, how you call it, is going to go. And so today we are talking about the fact that you are enough. And what does it mean? What does it mean? It's uh, it's about things like talking to and about yourself with love, priorita- prioritizing yourself, giving yourself a break from self-judgment, trusting yourself, being true to yourself, being nice to yourself, setting healthy boundaries, forgiving yourself when you aren't being true or nice. And for many people, uh, self-love is also self-care. And what it means to practice it, it's getting back to the basics. It's listening to our bodies. It's taking breaks from work to move and stretch. It's putting the phone down and connecting with others. So do something creative. Eating healthy, but um, sometimes indulging in your favorite foods. Self-love means accepting yourself as you are in this very moment for everything that you are, the good, the bad, and the ugly. It means accepting your emotions for what they are and putting your physical and emotional when, mental well-being first. What happens a lot of times is, and especially for women, we are very highly self-critical, tend to blame ourselves when we fail, we attribute successes to other people and circumstances and men to do the opposite they usually blame the circumstances if they fail on, in something and attribute the wins to themselves and this is one reason why women often fail to ask for promotions and here's some ways how research shows how self-criticism actually is holding you back It keeps you focused on what's wrong with you, thereby decreasing your confidence. It makes you afraid of failure, which hurts your performance. It makes you give up more easily and leads to poor decision making. And it applies not to women who are struggling with breakup, but it also is applicable to any any woman who is struggling with self-confidence, who is thinking that she is not good enough. It makes you less resilient in the face of a failure and also like less likely to learn from mistakes because what often happens because we are afraid to fail, we never even bother to start because the risk of failure or our thought about failure is so high that it keeps us stuck in our tracks. And if we reframe our mindset, If we look at life as if it's a series of feedback loops. So when something didn't go right, this is an opportunity for you to try again. Learn from your mistake and try again. If you look at life that it is a series of feedbacks instead of failures, you're not going to be as afraid to fail because you're just doing a test. You're doing a test. How is this working? Is this working or is this not working? And oftentimes, another uh, uh, comparison I can make or an example I can share is, I think, uh, Jeff Bezos. They were making studies like about Amazon and how they make uh, decisions. So they make decisions based on 40% of the information they know at the time before making the decision. So not even knowing, like, is this going to, is this thing going to succeed? 100%. 100%. They only know 40% of the information and they go with it. When we get to the point of doing something, as long as it's good enough, as a first step, it's good enough, we can step away from perfectionism and actually take that step, make that action and that that's holding us back. 
and doing the thing that you want you want to do without thinking oh what's gonna happen if i fail yes you you want to take calculated risks but on the other hand if you overanalyze you're never gonna take that first step you're never gonna start your road to recovery because you'll be afraid of oh, what's gonna happen because what happens is we are very uh we like to be where we are in our mind always it doesn't want to do any any hard work first of all and it likes to keep you in the familiar situations experiences people because if you if you do something uncomfortable it's outside of the norm your mind goes on high alert what's going on we are entering a new territory and it tries to get get you back into the same mold so it's very easy, uh, difficult to get out so because even though let's say if a situation is a familiar situation it's a familiar pain that you live with every day at least you know that pain at least you know that person or this situation or this relationship like for people who are stuck in toxic relationships and they cannot get out or they tell themselves they cannot get out because they got to the point of tolerating the other person and because it's so familiar it's so it's so scary to take that leap of faith and to step away of that relationship leave the relationship and start something new it's so difficult because we are so familiar to our circumstances and we become kind of married to the circumstances and we are afraid to make that step to step out and do something different for a change and re reverse our thinking so what are some of the benefits of self-compassion as soft as that concept may sound it's actually backed by hard data self-compassion has been linked to a host of benefits self-compassion means treating yourself as you would a friend in times of failure or pain with more understanding and kindness it means remembering alexander pope's quote to err is human we all make mistakes and it means being mindful of your emotions your thoughts without over identifying with them become an observer and of your situation as opposed to being right there inside of it and stop beating yourself up because you are your own worst enemy oftentimes we set goals or we set certain priorities and when we don't achieve them we start beating ourselves down to the point of and then that that's not good enough phrase comes comes into a point again so don't do that to yourself so what else self-compassion does for you it actually gives you an extra edge it increases motivation and willpower it brings you greater perspective and therefore better decision making it makes you more resilient you more easily bounce back in the face of failure and learn from your mistakes it makes you more emotionally intelligent and therefore improves your relationships it lowers your stress levels and decreases feelings of overwhelm it boosts your psychological well-being and decreases anxiety and depression it even improves your health get that self-compassion improves your health how would you say well if you fill your container up first you will feel more energized you will feel less stressful and that in itself is gonna boost your overall well-being how do you practice the self-compassion how do you do that so i'm gonna give you some tools at least uh, maybe four four tools depending on how much time we have so first of all notice your self-talk yesterday we talked about change your story change your life and this comes very true in this particular example in times of failure or challenge noticing your self-talk can curb your self-criticism and replace it with self-compassion here is an example instead of saying how could i have done this i'm such an idiot you might say i had a moment of absent-mindedness and that's okay it could have happened to anyone it's no big deal that's first one so always notice your self-talk because your mind is always listening whether you 
kind of having an internal dialogue, your mind is listening, or whether you're speaking words out loud. So always keep that in mind and notice what is it you are telling yourself every single day. Second thing you can do is write yourself a letter. When your emotions are overwhelming, writing a letter to yourself as if you were writing to a friend. Let's say you made a costly error and are feeling angry with yourself. It might even feel stifled or strange at first, but write a letter as if you are writing it to someone dear to you who had committed the same error. Your word should comfort and not attack, normalizing the situation rather than blowing it out of proportion. A number of studies demonstrate that writing about your emotions can help regulate them. Because what happens when you bottle those things up, when you don't release them, if for a long time, if you keep on holding on to those negative emotions of anger, of fear, if you don't release them, they can manifest in a disease because we are energetic beings. And what happens is it can manifest in disease. What is a disease? It's something that's not at ease because our body has a natural blueprint of health, believe it or not. And when we have, when we are holding on, on to our emotions, because emotion is like a telltale sign, like pay attention, it rings a bell. If you don't pay attention, then it goes on to your physical level and starts manifesting on your body. Now you get a pain in that spot, like maybe your head hurts or your arm hurts. And now it's like your second reminder. Here you go. You didn't listen to the emotion. Now you have this physical representation. And if you cannot tolerate pain, then finally you start paying attention to what's going on. So do yourself a favor and release your emotions in a nice sense. So write yourself a letter. Third thing I want to make is develop a self-compassion phrase. Nef, uh, what happens is self-compassion phrase, what it can be, it's a mantra or a phrase that you can turn to in challenging situations. So you are prepared. Before that situation happens, you are ready with this replacement that you can use. So you can deal with this calmly and gracefully. For example, this is a moment of suffering. Suffering is part of life. May I be kind to myself in this moment. May I give myself the compassion I need. Sing, say, having that kind of on a back burner, whenever a tough situation enters your life, having that in mind, keeps you more prepared for when a tough situation occurs in your life. Another point I want to make is making a daily gratitude list. Write down five things you are grateful for every day. Again, this may sound overly simplistic and you may be already doing that. However, this is extremely short exercise can produce long lasting results to increase your self-compassion in the end of each day. Write down five things that you are proud of having accomplished or five positive qualities you see in yourself. Another like, good example what you can do is when you go to sleep at night, instead of thinking of all the things you didn't get to do today, think of three things that went well. Maybe you met incredible people, maybe you did something awesome for yourself. Concentrate on those positive things that you accomplished in that given day. And see where it takes you. It will allow you to go back to sleep much easier than when you don't do it. When you start overthinking about all of the life's worries. So how do you accept yourself? Flaws and all. Well, first thing you can do is forgive yourself. And I think I talked, I mentioned about forgiveness in the prior videos, but I cannot say it highly enough because on every single day we encounter situations in our lives. We meet people, we maybe quarrel and we have a grudge on somebody else. It's important to do that, that forgiveness for yourself, who you were in the situation, for the other person. Just so if you want to have peace, practice forgiveness. Right, another good thing you can do is write I am enough on the bathroom mirror. And when you go brush your teeth in the morning, you get to see it. You get to see that statement on the side of the mirror. 
and look in, in yourself in the mirror and, and say to yourself, I love you. Those three simple words can do wonders because you're reinforcing that habit to make it believable, to make it sufficient and right in your face. So twice a day, when in the morning, when you check in, in the evening, when you turn for bed, you can look at that three simple words. You are enough. Another thing you can do is make a list of your accomplishments. And this might include people you have helped, your personal achievements, or troublesome times you have overcome. These types of examples can place and can help you focus on actions or deeds. And more concrete examples will give your identity and it will allow you to identify your strengths. So another thing is recognize how you judge yourself. Recognizing your own judgment is important in helping you identify areas where you are overly critical of yourself. Being overly critical is when you create areas or find attributes of yourself that you have unproductive feelings about. And this might include shame, disappointment, and these feelings can squash self-acceptance. Start by writing a list of negative thoughts you might have about yourself. For example, I'll never be able to do anything right. I'm always taking others' comments the wrong way. Something must be wrong with me. I am horrible at making decisions. And when you write those statements, ask yourself the question, like in the first example, I'll never be able to do anything right. Find an example of when you did something right. So it's now it's not always never. It's only a part, in a particular situation, maybe, that you see that. So the statements that you make, those negative statements that you make, they are not necessarily true. It's what you tell yourself. It's what you believe. And that's what you get to be confirmed in your real life. Recognize also how other people's comments affect you. When other people make comments about us, we often internalize them and make them our own. We work those things into our opinions about ourselves. And if you can figure out the root of your self-judgment, you can start to rethink how you perceive yourself. Not someone else's opinion of you, but you. How do you think of yourself? Challenge your inner critic. And this is a... And how can you do that? So whenever a negative thought comes in or this limiting belief comes in, you can ask, is this a kind thought? Does this thought make me feel good? Would I say this thought to a friend or a loved one? And if the answer is no to those questions, then you know that your inner critic is speaking again. So keep, keep that in mind. Of course, this process of self-acceptance, it can take a while. After all, you are retaining, retraining yourself about how you talk to yourself. So it can, it's a process and it takes time. So be patient with yourself. Time is precious. Make every day count by working with infinite patience and compassion for yourself. Before considering another's comment and judging yourself based on, based on it, consider if you respect the person who voiced it. Do care about what others say to you. Try improving yourself accordingly. But don't change yourself totally. There is no one like you in the world. And the only person you should change for is yourself. Whoever you are today to whoever you're going to be in the future. So never change for someone else. It's not going to last. Because you are suppressing your feelings, trying to mold into someone else's, uh, to be comfortable for someone else. But don't do that. Only do that for yourself. Only improve yourself, how you see yourself, how you value yourself. And yes. Yeah, so that this is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you are curious to learn more, you can watch other videos in the series of Breakup Recovery. If you are looking to transform, I am here for you. I opened my coaching practice and you there are limited spots available. So if you want to sign up, see if we can work together, you can check out uh, in the LinkedIn 
uh, not LinkedIn, in in the bio of the of this live, or I'm gonna drop in the comments below if it's on Facebook or on YouTube, it's, you can see it in the comments uh, where you can sign up for a free session to see if we can work together to transform your life for the better. If you're ready to change, if you're ready to take yourself to the next level, if you're ready to rediscover who you are, then reach out. It's only for people who want to change, who are committed, who are tired wherever they are today and they want to break through to the next level. So thank you so much for watching. Remember that you are limitless and you can tune in tomorrow where I'm going to talk about the art of being present to continue our live breakup series for the month of August. Thank you.